Genesis 41 and 37 says, And the thing was good in the sight in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servant, Can we find such one as this, a man whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. And thou shalt be over the, my house, and according unto the word shall all my people be ruled only in, on the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took his ring from his hand and pulled it upon jo put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him with vesture of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee, and made him, made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now. We thank you because there is none like you in all the earth. We thank you because your glory is beyond measure. We cannot even express your glory, the profoundness of your glory. God, we thank you because here we are in this season, dear Lord, where there are so many things that are going on about and around us. But God, you are able to speak a word to us, Lord. Speak so that we will hear. Speak so we will listen. Speak so that we will attend to what you are saying in this season. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the church say, Amen and Amen. You may be seated. We thank God for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard in these past few moments. We praise God for this chance to minister to the people of God today and to share a word from the Lord as I have spoken from the book of Genesis chapter 41 and we have been studying out of Genesis between chapter 35 and the end of, of Genesis the life of Joseph the reason why we've been studying the life of Joseph is because Joseph's story is so paramount in such a time as this on last week, we started on a series that was very important to me. I believe the Lord is leading me to teach from the series uh, and uh, to talk about the power of the listener, the power of the listener. It is important that we be able to listen and to hear. Uh, Jesus spoke a parable, and I'm going to take an excerpt from Matthew chapter 13 verse 16 but as you read the parable in the book of Matthew uh, as we transcend transition from the book of Genesis because uh, it was Joseph's responsibility to save thousands had not Joseph came on the scene God would not have say they the, the land of Egypt would have been destroyed because of the famine that come that have come for more than seven years so Joseph and Pharaoh were in conversation. Joseph actually was in jail uh, when Pharaoh had this dream. And as we remember, we will count, recount the story. Uh, and and uh, First Lady was saying this morning when we were listening to Brother Hezekiah Walker, she said, well, he's so repetitious. I said, well, repetition has its place because a lot of times if you don't say it again, then especially with children, they won't get it, you know. And I learned that even one, one thing that startles me the most, even grown folk, 
<laughs> Lord have mercy. You, had, you said to them two or three times and they still didn't get it. And sometimes you have to utilize re repetition and ask the question, did you hear what I just said? You know, because a lot of times we hear, we respond to what we are hearing. From a technical standpoint, a lot of times there is a lot of noise and a lot of distractions going on. And that's the reason why a lot of times we don't hear. But today I want to uh, briefly just go through and thank God for everything that we have seen and experienced. Thank God for having an awesome black history celebration on last week. Mother Rose is, is just so phenomenal. We thank God for her love for the Lord and her unselfishness. And I told my wife the other day, and, and, and she's not the only one in this category, but I'm talking about her today, okay? Because a lot of times, you, you, black folk, you can't talk about one person without, well, he didn't say that about me. You know, <laughs> Lord, have, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about her. Lord, have mercy. And, uh, but, uh, but that doesn't mean that she's the only one that has a gift that she has. But thank God for the gift that Mother Rose has. Thank God for it. Amen. Amen. And she's not only bringing better life together, but if you, if you listen and see, she's bringing the community together. You know, and we had one situation where she, she's not about herself, you know. And I was talking with Sister Ann last week. I don't know how I got off on this, Mother Rose. You're going to have to give me a place to stay or somewhere to hide, you know. <laughs> I was talking to Sister Ann, and she made this beautiful presentation. And I told Sister Ann, I said, you, you give it to this young man who was a, 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 one of the black Negro League um, baseball players in the Hall of Fame. I said, you give it to him. She said, she put it together. I said, I would love you to give it. She said, no, because she wants better life to be seen and recognized. You know, she could have said, oh, this is my thing. I can do what I want to do. But there are people around us that are really actually unselfish people. Amen. Because when you look at the big pitch picture, it's bigger than us. What we are called to do is bigger than the fact that I got a title or a position and a, 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 some, a little bit of power. Because if you got power today, just wait till tomorrow. That power is going to be laid to rest. Amen. So we thank God for what, what the patriots have done and what they're trying to do in this season. We are in a critical time. Y'all pray with me because I'm a time-sensitive person. And by certain times, I like to be at a certain place. And I, I want you to come back, so I'm not going to give it to you all today. You understand? I could, I could give it to you. I could do like Paul did. I can speak until 6 o'clock tonight. Lord, have mercy. But uh, I won't have nobody here with me. Oh, my goodness. But I'm trying young people, young people, children. Hallelujah. As Elder John said last week, if you, if you had... Uh, if you have a cell phone on you, put it on rest right now. This is one of the most important moments of your life. And, and you know, really, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for, in this season, I'm looking for some Gideons. You know, I used to get upset when grown folk, when elders and missionaries wouldn't do what they know they're supposed to do. It used to make me upset. I don't get upset over it anymore because I'm looking for Gideons. Gideon had a big army, and he had a very strong job to do, but God said, no, I want to break you down to 300 against 10,000. And you know God confounded the enemy because there was a certain spirit that these people had in them. And as the army says, I'm looking for a few good men and women. A sidebar, Sister, uh, Sister Debbie had her birthday celebration a few years ago at Metropolitan Mother, and she's still alive today, so. <laughs> if you're superstitious, then uh, take it from Sister Debbie, she's still alive today. So here we find in our text, God give us five Holy Ghost minutes. We find in our text, I want you to do like Jesus said and John Mark said in the book of Revelations. He that have ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I ask you for your ear in the next five minutes. I ask you to train yourself in the next five minutes to be a listener. 
It is important to recognize that we learn about 80% of our time is spent communicating. We train people on how to write, how to read, how to communicate, but there are very few classes or classrooms that are designed to train us how to do the most important asset that we need in our lives, and that's the ability to listen. Can I have your attention just for a few more moments? Can I have your undivided attention? Because what I say may change the rest of your life. Hallelujah. If you have an ear, if you have an eye, listen to what I'm saying. Matthew chapter 13, verse 16 says, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears for they hear. How blessed are you when you have eyes that can see and ears that can hear? Just a little bit here. We know that in this text, as you read the 13th chapter of the book of Matthew, it talks about Jesus talking about sowing seeds. He talked about how plain it would be because Jesus spoke in parables. Some people like to tell you straight off, you know, say, well, why you sugarcoated? Why you beat around the bush? I, I'm going to tell you just like I want you to get it. You can like it or you can, i tell you a piece of my mind. But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus spoke in parables, especially in this text and many others. Most of the time he taught, he taught in parables. Because sometimes, my brother and my sisters, I remember when Deacon Lathan, who has had uh, open heart surgery, am I correct? Amen. And he's had a, got a new kidney in him, that kidney that's about 27, 28 years old. Lord have mercy. But I remember going to the surgery room the day that he was supposed to take the surgery, and we were sitting in Norfolk Centura Hospital. And when he was sitting in Norfolk Centura Hospital, his surgical doctor came up to him and said, Mr. Lathan, how are you doing? I like this. I, I used to be a core director at Western Branch High School when I was a senior. And this, the choir was 99% white. But whenever I stood, it was just like this. Because they knew that when Dwayne opened his mouth, he was going to say something that makes sense. And white folk really love to listen. That's why while y'all running all around the church and tearing up the carpet and all that kind of stuff, and you go to church and the white folk do, you know. I went to a funeral one time in, in a predominantly white church, and I had some black cousins with me. They didn't even have an organ. And they were, they were singing hymns like heaven was coming down. And those black Negroes that came with me were trying to get them to have Kojic Pentecostal church, and that even won't even their culture. And I said, bro, are you listening? So here we find that it's important for us to be able to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Let me give you a little if you don't already know, a little, bit in, a little bit of insight on listening and I will be closed. We are called to be conscience listeners. Listening consciously. By doing so, first of all, you have to stop talking. You cannot listen at a level at any level, excuse me, if you are talking. Then you must stop reacting. You cannot listen consciously if you are focusing on what you are going to say next. You cannot listen. You must listen with feelings 
It is easier to be empathetic if you understand how someone feels and just not all the time how you feel about your point of view. Rather than focusing on the content, take a minute to focus on the feeling of the other person who's speaking to you. Listen for clues about yourself. What is the listener saying about you? Does it ring true? Is it true or is it false? We find this paramount in a lot of marriages where we're so busy going back and forth and forth and back and back and forth that we don't listen. The surgical doctor, let me go back, the surgical doctor came into the waiting room where Deacon Lathan was and he said, how are you doing? He says, I'm doing okay, but I've just been itching all over the place all night long. The doctors immediately, without any pause or anything, said, we are canceling the surgery. Because a lot of times, we are so busy to want to tell somebody a piece of our mind when we're not really listening to the circumstances or how what we say to them is going to affect the total outcome of what we're doing. They canceled the surgery, they fixed the problem, and there was no risk. There was a, minimize, a minimal amount of risk on the table because the doctor was listening to Lathan's body. There are better marriages, there are better families, there are better relationships when we're listening to other people other than ourselves. Listen for motivation. What motivates the speaker to feel this way? Why is my wife or my husband, why do they feel the way they feel? Why do the children feel the way they feel? We live in a, in a, in a society where there's an all-time high of young people, teenagers, that are committing suicide. And parents are not listening to the warning signs. There are school shootings that are going on because parents were not listening to the fact that their little Jimmy had a problem and that he was strong enough to go into a school and to destroy as many people as he could. We're not listening to the cries of sinners. We're not listening to the cries of our relate relatives and friends. We are so busy trying to get our own point of view across. We're so busy trying to go where we need to go, but we're not obtaining the blessings that we need to obtain because we just won't listen. Oh, my God. I got to get out of here. That's the way, reason why a lot of us are acting the way we're acting. I don't have a problem with y'all saying, not saying amen. Hallelujah. You know why? Because I want you to hear me. You know, my father used to pastor the church one time, and, and I didn't know that the people, that he was getting on the congregant's last nerve in Smithfield. And, and, and he would preach, and they would be saying, amen. I said, Dad, got it going on. They were saying, amen. They were really saying, ouch. <laughs> they were really upset at him. And the, and the more he hit the nail on the head, the louder he got. But if they had been really listening, we would probably be in Smithfield today with a mega church. Because the church sat dormant for years after they laid the foundation for a new church. It sat dormant right at this level of the brick land for many years. Pastor McNair came there and within years he had finished the project completely <clears throat> because he listened to God. Are you listening to God? Are you teaching your children how to listen? Because that's what our problem is. We just won't hear. Listening for a position. It is compromised possibly or is the, is, the piece, is the speaker compromised or unmovable because we're trying to get in a certain position. Listen for benefits. How will this benefit you and others? 
I'm listening because I really want to understand. You know, my husband is screaming and my wife is screaming. You know, when I first got married, we did a lot of screaming. Lord, have mercy. But at some point, we had to stop and say, where are we going with all of this screaming? You know, I just want to be real. Lord, have mercy. You know, then I heard Paul say in Corinthians, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I acted like a child. And when I got old, I was still acting like a child. If you don't listen, hallelujah. What's the gain? Can we stop just for a moment and focus on listening? I was reading an, a book on form, becoming formed in the image of God. And I was, I was, I was reading a, another book on talking about the life that I always wanted. And they were talking about prayer. How we condition ourselves for prayer. And the author said that it was like having... When you first go into prayer, there's so much noise going on in your spiritual mind that it's like monkeys jumping around a banana tree. <laughs> and, and in order to really get to the place where you can hear God, you got to calm those monkeys down. Get them to stop jumping. Give them a banana so they can sit down and listen. You know? And then after you get to that place, in that debate, in that disagreement with your wife, with your husband, with your children. You just stop and take a few deep breaths. And, in, and say, God, in all of my ways, I'm going to acknowledge you so you can direct my path. If you ask him, uh, he will, I don't know who I'm helping today. I didn't even want to preach today. I don't know where Sister Elmore is. I tried to throw this thing off on her and she ran the other way. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. So don't blame it on me. Blame it on God. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. I'm almost finished. Recap what was said and calmly as possible. Go over the details. If you are flapping like a, a gorilla, you know, trying to get your point across, you can't hear because you're so busy trying to think of what you're going to say next. How are you going to win this argument? Don't you know you don't have to win? God will fight your battle for you. Hallelujah. God will help you. Hallelujah. Use phrases such as, I heard you said that. It seems like you want to say this. Ask for confirmation. One thing when, 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 when my wife and I used to get in uncivil debates, I would stop after, after, after a while since I was the man, you know, I was responsible, you know. And I said, well, can we agree on the word of God? And once we agree on the word of God, see, if you got, if you got a spouse that can't agree on the word of God, you got a challenge. But if they can agree on the word of God, then you are batting 150. Ask for confirmations. Ask questions such as, do you feel I have handled, how I've handled this situation was the right way? Show some empathy. Show some concern. So Jesus says in here in his parable, he tells them in verse 16, be blessed, but blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. So when I wake up in the morning, God let me, I'm finished, I'm finished. God let me hear what my ears need to hear. You know? You know, sometimes, uh, I don't mean to do this, but I'll be okay. We were out eating the other night, and I, and I told Sister Satterfield, hallelujah, my wife, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Uh, she was over at another table, and we were sitting at one table, and sometimes, you know, they pick up the, the habits of my late father-in-law. They can, you, you, yes, Lord, she, you know, I'm talking about you. Lord have mercy. 
and he, she all the way over at the other table. And then Sister Jean, her sister, went over there with her. And they were, they were still sitting, Sister Tatiana, Tatiana, at the table that we were at. But they went over to the other table. I call it dipping. <laughs> Lord have mercy. But sometimes we got to dip up into heaven and say, God, what are you saying for today? God, I need you to anoint my seeing, and I need you to anoint my hearing, and I need you to help me teach my children how to see and my children how to hear so that they will be successful in all things that they do. Sister Hicklin, you are Satterfield too, so don't even try it. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Help me to hear. I'm not, I'm not talking about my people, y'all. They're my people, and I love them to death. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Help me to hear. Help me to see, because a lot of times, a lot of times, I'm looking, but I'm not seeing. I'm hearing, but I'm not listening. And sometimes we have to ask God to anoint my ears so that I can be blessed in my seeing. Less than my hearing. We have people that have reoccurring issues every day, which simply means, let us all stand, I got to go. That they actually won't go away. You have situations in your life that it looks like it won't go away, and the devil keeps telling you that it's not going to go away. But by the grace of God, old things are going to pass away. And all things are going to become new because I put my trust and my reliance on Jesus Christ. God, I want to hear you speak to me. God, I want to hear your word. I want to hear you abide in my life so that I can be blessed beyond measure. I want to stop seeing it my way, dear God, and see it your way. Because if I could hear what you are saying, then I can hear you leading me and guiding me into all truths. If it's not true, you know it ain't God. Hallelujah. If it's not righteous, you know it's not God. And we've got to have in our spirits and in our minds the, the courage to say, God, when you speak to me, I'm going to listen to what you are saying. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father, I thank you now. I thank you for this opportunity to come before you in earnest prayer. God, we have your children here the saying that we need to hear from you we need a word from you if we don't hear from you what will we do wanting you Show us a better way if we don't hear from you. What will we do? There were thousands of people, hundreds and thousands of generations that were saved. Because King Pharaoh listened to Joseph. Joseph was a prisoner in jail. And because he had an anointing on his life, the king walked too high to say, I'm not listening to a jailbird. I'm not listening to a young, young man. But if he has a spirit of God in him, I'm going to listen to what he says. Today I want to open the doors 
of this church there may be someone who don't know Christ because without Christ we will not be able to hear you have not given your life to Christ today you have not given your soul